Hello. This video is uh, to demonstrate um, how we can actually use GitHub uh, to be able to do our project at school between two different computers and um, uh, set up our Linux account to access GitHub as our Windows account does. This is the last video of the series of video of, of setting GitHub for school work and collaboration. So what I'm going to do right now is demonstrate how you can actually set up an SSH key on a Linux box, Linux account of yours, and add the key to your GitHub account and therefore to be able to um, move uh, the changes back and forth between two computers. First thing uh, to log is to log into your uh, Linux account. And um, now this is my school Linux account uh, on, on Matrix. For those who are at Seneca, they know exactly what I'm talking about, but it's simply a Linux box. Uh, so the very first thing I need to do, I need to create an SSH key. And the reason for this SSH key is to be able to connect to GitHub um, more comfortably so I don't have to enter username and password every time I want to push and pull from the repository. So what you need to do is to first type ssh-keygen-t and then ed25519 and then dash c and then the email that you have on github. So <coughs> in here I'm going to put my student email. So that essentially creates a uh, and an SSH key on my Linux box and then I'm gonna um, add the, the public key of this key to my GitHub account and therefore GitHub and my Linux box can talk with each other properly. So after issuing this command it's gonna ask which file that you want to put it in. If this name is okay for you you can just put this one or if you want to change the name copy the URL that you <coughs> sorry the, the path that you have over here first and then add the name that you want. For example, I'm going to put over here um, F -Salim, uh, GitHub, I'm going to call it. So that essentially becomes the name of my uh, SSH key. And uh, I hit enter. A passphrase, it's a good idea to have a passphrase and a passphrase because Linux account, your Linux account is, if it's on your own private machine, you don't need a passphrase, you just let it, let it empty because uh, your machine is secure and you cannot, nobody else can access it. But if this is a public thing that you have or on a server that other people's and administrators stuff, they can access it. It's a good idea to add a passphrase. That passphrase will be asked um, when your uh, authentication uh, um, is required with GitHub. I'm going to put a very simple thing over here. Probably it's going to complain that this is, oh, oh. There you go. So it didn't complain. So it is created and um, if you look at your SSH account, so if I actually go to my SSH account, tilde SSH, if I go to the, sorry, SSH directory and take a look at there, you will see that there are two keys created over here and absolutely my GitHub. So I have my uh, SSH key created and now what I need to do is uh, uh, to actually add the, uh, uh, commit this to the SSH agent so um, my uh, Linux box um, uh, adds this to my identity key so whenever I uh, my account wants to negotiate with another computer uh, the SSH keys they know that uh, um, what to expect. Now we have to ensure that our um, SSH agent is actually running so I'm gonna say eval I'm gonna type eval backcode this is backcode the one at the top of the tab key not not uh, single code and then ssh dash agent and then dash s and then another backcode so this runs it and if you get the agent uh, program ID over there then it's and then you're good to go after you do this you need to uh, actually set up, uh, add the, the key you just created to the SSH agent. Now that the SSH agent is running, we, we need to add the key we just created over here. To add the SSH key to the SSH agent, 
all I need to do is to type ssh dash add and I'll simply get what you have in here and that's the SSH key that we created and add it over here and then it's going to tell you what is the passphrase that you just added to it you re-enter the passphrase and the identity is added now your um, uh, Linux box has the key set to actually uh, be in communication with whatever servers that provides the, the public key of the private key we just added to the SSA, to the to the Linux box. Now the next thing we need to do is to actually add this uh, the the public key of this private key that we created to our um, GitHub account. So um, log into your GitHub account and uh, click under your um, uh, your profile over here we open it up and go to settings so uh, I am logged in as I saw in my student account over here and I'm gonna go to setting and you click on setting and over there you will see that it says SSH and GPG keys now here I already have the key for my demo machine that I'm recording this instruction in so this is for my Windows machine now I'm gonna add a new SSH key and this new SSH key, I'm going to call it um, um, matrix uh, key. So I know that this belongs, this key belongs to my uh, matrix account. So if later on I want to manage the keys or delete one, so the, 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 my GitHub is not connected to that computer anymore, I know which key I'm supposed to remove. Now, in here, I have to actually copy and paste the um, public key that was um, uh, created for that account. So for that I actually um, have my FPT, FTP client open so I'm just gonna double click over here because it's uh, the hidden directory it doesn't show it over here so I'm double clicking over here and I'm gonna say over here a dot SSH and I'm gonna CD to that directory and let me refresh and there you go now I have my uh, two keys over here I'm gonna open up this key and copy everything in here copy and now I'm gonna go back to my github account and paste that back now I'm gonna click add, click add SSH key and that is going to add my matrix key to my github account now my matrix account is connected to my github account so um, how I actually use this it's pretty simple if I actually want to do my schoolwork now this is demonstration for my OP244 students but it's applicable to any thing that you want any program any uh, course that you want to use um, github for your uh, to keep track of what you have and collaborate with others and specifically I'm adding this thing so students can collaborate with me so if they have a problem they put their information the, the, their uh, files that they have problem with on a repository and let me know so I can actually pull it from the repository and go through it so um, what I what I need to do over here is to um, actually uh, go to my repositories and definitely uh, this is an empty thing so I don't have repositories over here so click on your name your repositories you're gonna get in here I'm gonna click new now this is what I want to create for my say OOP244 as a student so I'm gonna say over type over here OOP OOP244 and make sure you make it private because if you make it public other people can see it and if other people see it then uh, and uh, get the your work from here uh, then you're gonna be uh, responsible um, uh, for, for, for plagiarism charges so make sure that you have this thing as private um, add dot get ignore file that's very important and for now set it to C++ just to have something and later on copy the one that I have in my repositories for schoolwork and that covers everything that are supposed to be ignored like that git ignore file holds the um, uh, name and type of the files that are not supposed to be po uh, passed around uh, when you're dealing with your projects when you're doing your C++ so anything you don't want to go on git you can add it to dot git ignore and it's going to ignore it if you want to add a readme file over here to communicate something with 
the, the next person who's collaborating with you that's a good idea so I'm gonna add that one too and I'm gonna click on create repository and that is going to create the private repository on github now that the repository is created I'm gonna uh, uh, clone it on my local computer so I'm gonna copy the URL for the SSH make sure that this is SSH copy that and so you click over here and it copies it to the clipboard then I'm going to go to my uh, documents say on uh, on my local computer right click on some empty area and over here go um, get clone and uh, automatically what I just copied on the web page and I clicked over there and it uh, put it in clipboard pa it will be pasted over here and uh, uh, I um, my uh, Putty key is already set over here to automatically load from uh, previous videos you've seen it uh, so I'm gonna click on OK over there and it's gonna clone the OOP244 repository over here and I have it now in here I'm gonna add uh, uh, a little project from my uh, with Visual Studio say and uh, uh, do something and I want to test it on my uh, Linux to see if it works over there or not on my Linux uh, application so I'm gonna create a new project then click on next on an empty project in here and go to the do the repository I just created which is here let's say I'm gonna call this one oh, um, workshop one so WS one I'm gonna call it so that's uh, workshop one and uh, now I'm gonna say create that's gonna create the project uh, the workshop for me now that the workshop created let me just add <coughs> a little bit of uh, code in here just think just to see how it works so I'm gonna say new item in here add a file And add some code to it and let's type over here see out hello github okay I'm gonna run and run the program over here so the program is working perfectly over here it says hello github so I have that now I want to test this on Linux and see how it works so <coughs> the process over here is almost the same it's very simple I'll go to my now that I have this um, I'm gonna first push it into oh sorry I um, uh, minimized the wrong one there you go so now <coughs> I'm gonna go in here right click on what I have this dot get here ignore that you see I'm gonna copy the dot get ignore that I have from one of the uh, uh, workshops that I have at Seneca because that's more comprehensive it has all the things that you need to ignore so the kit ignore that I have is in one of the um, repositories that I already cloned so this is OP two for uh, OP workshops I'm just gonna copy and uh, the git ignore from any of these I'm just gonna right click over here. and if you and if you look at it actually if you look at it let's open it with say a notepad or something there you go if you actually look at it it has all the stuff for Visual Studio and things that you need code light all the different things that we have done through the semesters and that's much more comprehensive than what you have originally created by github so I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste that over the git ignore that I have over here paste replace so essentially now it's going to ignore all the extra things that it has in here and doesn't need to actually submit it to github push it to github or commit it to the repository now I can actually right click and add so I am adding um, as you see it only three files are added over here that's what it, what is needed I'm gonna click on OK commit now I'm gonna say over there I'm gonna put some uh, comment over here that um, this is my first github test um, github test and I'm gonna commit it and push it so by committing I'm I, I add the, the files to the repository on my local computer 
by pushing I'm passing it to github now everything is up on github uh, you can verify that although, although you don't need it but you can verify it just if you refresh you will see that it's going to come up over here so that's my first github so we have it over here now again I'm going to go to code and I'm going to copy the SSH uh, path over there now I'm going to go to my uh, um, matrix account CD uh, let's say in here I'm gonna go to um, create um, uh, I already have an op244 directory over here um, so I'm gonna say CD op244 and in here I'm gonna say uh, my github so make directory my git hub okay CD my github I just want to have it at a place that I know where it is so what you need to do to have those things brought up over here for the first time is to write git clone and then paste the path that you had for the for the um, uh, SSH uh, connection to GitHub. And if you actually click it, now it's cloned. Uh, if you hit enter, the, uh, it's going to get cloned. And if you look at it right now, everything that you have is in here so WS01 <clears throat> now I'll, I'm gonna simply compile it in G++ uh, PRG.CPP A.out and it says hello github now I'm gonna go back on my Windows machine again and change something over here and bring it back to Linux and see how that works so uh, now I'm now I'm gonna come to my uh, to my project over here um, and I'm going to have another C out over here. Hello, GitHub uh, with a new line. And have this tested. Make sure it works. It works perfectly. Um, now I'm going to go uh, go down again and push this. Uh, uh, commit my changes if you added a file make sure you go toward this git add but if you just modified the already existing files all you need to do is to go commit so I'm gonna click on commit over here added a new line commit so it's now committed to the local push sends it up to github now that everything's on github I can go back on my Linux over here in that directory all I need to do is to say git pull and hit enter so what happens it just receives the changes that you have made to the old uh, to the to the old code and brings those in so if I compile it again <coughs> and go a dot out this time I'm gonna have with a new line and if I actually look at my prg.cpp you will see that the second line is actually added over here and this helps you do things back and forth so if you change something in here you can commit and uh, push upstream into github and then come back on your windows machine and pull the changes and like this you have one source that is common on github and um, you can have it everywhere you want and of course uh, for this OOP244 thing that you have I would strongly suggest that you go to settings for the repository and um, click on manage access and in here you add a collaborator so essentially you say invite a collaborator and in here type Fardad and you'll see Fardad Suleiman is going to come up over here this is me just click it, click, click over there, and you can see my face so you know who I am, and add Farda to this repository. And I'm gonna confirm that, um, confirm the invitation, and I'm gonna have access to it too. So if you have any problem with your program, again, as I mentioned in a previous video, just push the uh, uh, the questions and uh, the status of your app uh, of your application to OP244, and send me the um, the link for it. Uh, so you simply send me the link for the um, for the um, uh, SSH uh, access. So you copy this and you send it to me, and I'll check it out and I can um, apply my changes or comments 
so you can pull the changes and see exactly what's the what's the difference and to be able to actually see the changes again um, I mentioned that before but I'm going to mention it again if any changes are made all you need to do is to go to your uh, uh, repository and right click over here and go tortoise git show log it shows you exactly what happened when so if I make any change it over here you're gonna see who's the author and then you click on it it shows what files are changed you double click on that file and it opens the changes so you can actually see what changes were made to your program and therefore understand what the helps that I actually provided were for you that's it and uh, I hope you enjoy using Git because it's very helpful for uh, your studies and um, I expect all my students to have this account whenever they are asking for help. Have a beautiful day.